Portugal signed the Memorandum of Understanding with the European Commission, ECB and IMF, and uh, B uh, had a representation of the European Commission, it's not, uh, it was not an easy thing. Uh, because we needed to explain something that it was it was not very useful for Portuguese people, for Irish people, uh, and we understood our countries. We we are Europeans, uh, so we need to balance. And uh, nowadays, sometimes it's not easy for me, as former official of the Commission, be uh, Secretary of State for European Affairs. And uh, one day, I gave a, an interview to a journalist, and in the end of the, the the, the interview, my press advisor told me, you know, you are no more an official of the European Commission, you are Secretary of State. <laughs> so this is, but uh, this is a common work and I think that uh, you need to, to, to go on and uh, to be hard and uh, to be engaged and commit to discuss uh, uh, European issues, issues in a very difficult days like uh, we have uh, nowadays. Ireland joined the European Economic Community in 1973. We, Portugal, we only caught up uh, with you in 1986, when we finally were able to join. We are now <coughs> celebrating 30 years in the European Union. You might have noted that I said when we were finally able to join. This explains in part the difference in Irish and Portuguese attitudes toward the European Union. For us, the European Union was the return to Europe, the place we were able to return to when we had stabilized our democracy after the revolution of 1974, which put an end to decades of authoritarian, self-imposed exile from the development of Western, Western societies. Even in 1977, when Portugal formalized its accession request, our democratic system was still in a transition period and democracy was not consolidated yet. And nowadays, I remember very well this moment because on 1977, when Mari Soares our Prime Minister, our former Prime Minister, decided to ask for, to request the adhesion to European Union, he invited a group of uh, experts, uh, people coming from university, banks, economy, industry, and Mari Soares asked them, what is your assessment, your position? Uh, is Portugal, uh, uh, it's a good, a good uh, decision for Portugal to become a member of the European Union? And the answer was unanimous, no. And he entered in his office and he wrote a letter. He asked to his Minister of Foreign Affairs to send a letter to the presidents, to the European Union presidents, it means United Kingdom, uh, send a letter to the Minister of Foreign Affairs from United Kingdom, from the presidents, asking for requesting addition. Nowadays, I don't know if a political leader took the same decision. Because nowadays, political leaders try to, 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 to find consensus and have uh, difficulties uh, to act in a different way. So, Marie Soares decided on that way, and nowadays, since 1986, it means 30, uh, 30 years ago, we are members of the European Union. Europe, for us, at the moment, was modernity. Europe was the template for us to build modern and democratic institutions. We saw the European Union institutions as opportunity to improve our own institutions and to consolidate the democratic regime we started to create only after April 74. I remember very well these times, very special times. <laughs> Uh, I was uh, a young girl, I was founder of a youth, uh, political youth organization, and uh, uh, so I I'm speaking on this not uh, only because uh, these are the results of research uh, on, uh, about this period of the Portuguese history, but also because I was uh, an activist uh, at the moment. On the other hand, Portugal had only one single experience of a real foreign occupation with the Napoleonic Wars. Over centuries, 
and against the odds we had been able to maintain independence with borders that have been defined by treaties in since 1297 and are thus the oldest in Europe and therefore probably the oldest in the world. We have done this through our own efforts and by joining our alliances and changing them as needed. I think this explains in part how relaxed we are in terms of working with others and sharing sovereignty with others. Neither land nor sovereignty has been taken from us for a very long period. During these 30 years, we have successfully managed to grow alongside Europe. Our integration process in the Union has always been known in a constructive way. We have always been the core of European integration, especially on issues such as completion of internal market or the free movement of people. We were also a founding member of Euro and one of the seven founders, founders of Schengen area. Portugal developed during our presidency of 2007 the necessary technical mechanism software to enlarge Schengen to the member states which had joined the European Union in 2004. And it's important to remember that the first EU Africa, European Union Africa Summit, took place during a Portuguese president uh, in uh, 2000, and the second one, the second European Africa Summit, took place during a Portuguese presidency of the European Union in 2007. It means that between 2000 and 2007, no European Union Africa summit took place. Also, during the Portuguese presidency, we uh, organized the first summit, European Union Brazil, that took place in 2007 during the Portuguese presidency of the European Union. If you look back, we recognize that the last three decades have been full of fundamental changes, and I will quote some changes. Democracy was consolidated. Other countries, Eastern and Central Europe countries, looked for European solidarity and joined the Union in their democratization process. The Portuguese economic and social structure has changed. European solidarity funds promote development. We moderni modernized our communication, education, research, cultural and health infrastructures. Around 70% of our exports go now to European Union countries. But we are aware that internal market potential is not being fully explored. Portugal has always strived for a digital and an energy market in the European Union. By the way, digital economy is a priority in our national reform program, our medium-term strategy that has already approved with a very positive assessment by the European Commission. On energy, we are among the most ambitious in the European Union, on moving to our renewals, like you in Ireland, on doing that in a sustainable way, on promoting a real energy market. On education and research systems have vastly improved and internationalized. Many Portuguese scientists, and I underline many, now receive European and world awards and distinctions. Portuguese universities are members and promote research networks at European and international levels. There was a huge investment in science through the structural funds, EU programs <coughs> such as Erasmus and now Erasmus Plus, successive research and development framework programs, and now more recently in uh, uh, Horizon 2020. Uh, it's, it's interesting because on Horizon 20, 2020, there are 50 common Portuguese-Irish projects, 
mobilizing 43 Portuguese institutions and 40 Irish institutions. We also modernized our administration. We gave ourselves a place in European integration process, in the Euro, in Schengen areas, in ancient cooperation. We are there and we intend to always be there. We, like, uh, uh, we are convinced that uh, uh, are stronger in the world because we are at the center, of, uh, at the center in Europe. Our health and well-being standards have improved. Today, Portugal infant mortality rate is only 2.9 per thousand, one of the lowest in Europe, better than the EU average that it is 3.7. But 30 years ago, it means when we enter in the European Union, the scenario was quite the opposite. Portugal rate was one of the worst in Europe, 15.8 and seven times higher than today. But most of all, there was also a change of horizons. Portugal, as we used to say, received more world and brought more world into Europe with our language and culture, but also through our privileged relations with Latin America and Africa. Portugal celebrates 30 years in the Union at a time when Europe is facing several crises. The refugees crisis, terrorist attacks, the euro crisis and the referendum in the United Kingdom after tomorrow. Even if the financial crisis and the bailout programs dealt strong balls to the European project, it is the refugee crisis on one hand and UK referendum results on the other hand that are perhaps the most serious crisis the European Union ever faced. Right from the beginning of its membership, Portugal has experienced what the EU is capable to deliver in times of crisis. This was not least thanks to convinced Europeans who gave new momentum to European integration, like, for example, Mario Soares from Portugal. In 2016, the European Union is in crisis mode again, but this time it seems to be more dramatic that just another crisis. Committed Europeans have a hard job in holding Europe together and rebuilding trust and solidarity. While for several generations the European Union has been a project of hope, it seems to be perceived more and more as a treated project nowadays. Solidarity among member states already weakened during the past, the past six years of the economic and financial crisis is again being put to the test with the arrival of more than one million refugees to Europe. Solidarity in its full meaning is maybe the key word. Portugal has always expressed its total solidarity with the most affected European partners. The Portuguese government has already announced the intention to go beyond EU quotas on refugees. Prime Minister António Costa offered to shelter more than 10,000 refugees, more than double of EU share. Under the, uh, letter, Portugal, uh, under the letter, Portugal should receive 4,500 refugees. We are available to receive an additional 5,880 refugees in a bilateral agreement with the, seven, uh, with the six member states, Greece, Italy, Austria, Sweden, and uh, uh, Germany, five, not six, five member states. Portugal remains committed with strong European credentials and will participate in the preservation of Schengen and of the European project as a whole. Our position is clear. We are against Schengen expulsions. 
the unilateral or the unilateral closure of borders cannot be seen as a solution. Nevertheless, we support the EC proposal, the European Commission proposal, to create a European border and coastal guard. Regarding UK referendum, just a few words to underline that more than the agreement achieved in four areas, competitiveness, social benefits, eurozone and sovereignty, it is the value of the United Kingdom membership to the European Union that should be emphasized. The tremendous effort that some countries have made to accommodate the UK's needs is a real demonstration of, the, of the solidarity. The 27 member states showed their commitment to the United Kingdom membership of the European Union. As I mentioned in the General Affairs Council last uh, February, we made every effort respecting the European Union values and principles, namely the principle of non-discrimination. But we didn't make the campaign, and British citizens and British politicians are, did the campaign and will vote after tomorrow. If the UK leaves the EU, this will be an enormous setback and an incentive for anti-European and populist movements everywhere. If, after tomorrow, the result of the referendum is a yes for the exit, it is a bad thing for Europe, but also, in my point of view, a bad thing for the UK. But if the UK remains, it is also a huge challenge for the European Union. It is an evidence that Europe will not be the same after the referendum. I also would like to speak now about the crisis in the Eurozone. It's not enough to share the same monetary policy and coordinate budgetary policy. The Monetary Union needs to become a real economic, fiscal and social union. The euro will only be able to continue if the Member States coordinate their economic, fiscal and social policy on a more binding basis. We should welcome the banking, the banking Union as a cornerstone of the Eurozone construction as well as the single resolution mechanism and the single resolution fund, even if European deposit insurance scheme is still missing. The Banking Union is just one of the economic and monetary union dimensions. We are committed to going further in all of the AMU dimensions. The public debate launched by European Commission on 8 March and going on until the end of 2016 on social pillar is needed. The social dimension was not given enough value in the framework of European and Monetary Union. And European citizens felt it. In Portugal, after and during the adjustment program, it's a very important issue. And the intention of the Commission is to have a AAA rating on social matters all around Europe. For it, European institutions and member, station, and member states need to improve a lot and to work hard. The Economic and Monetary Union needs a stronger emphasis on economic growth and employment. We should also advance toward a financial union and a fiscal union with its own budget, which can be funded by different sources in addition to the current up to 1% of GDP. We look forward to the Monti report on own results, which may also be an important contribution to this debate. Both are need to make a stronger and more robust Eurozone. The five president report, even if in our opinion lacking in ambition, is a good starting point. Its implementation should be done in, accord in accordance with the timetable set. 
With its new strategic agenda, the European Union is finally putting the emphasis on promoting growth and employment and strengthening social, dimension, social cohesion. Structural reforms, strong investment and consolidation of national budget are the cornerstone of this new agenda. The progress we have recently achieved always a lot of the efforts of social democratic and socialist in power all over Europe. We have been arguing for this for a long time, and much more has to be done to strengthen the social dimension of the economic and monetary union. Europe needs a new impulse for convergence. Without this impulse, we cannot face the competitive imbalances and social imbalances between member states and within some member states. The EU is at the crossroads. Are we falling back in the continent marked by new fancies and national egoism? Or do we take the next step to a political union that meets the expectations of European citizens and stands together in times of crisis? There is no automatism, neither in one neither in a, or the other dimension. But we have to refuse scepticism that leads us now here. Moments of crisis and threats are challenging moments. But it is when addressing them that we understand how the European project is irreplaceable. Today, the European integration is more than ever fundamental. We need more Europe and not less Europe. We have experienced that the European Union is not some kind of automatic convergence machine. Since joining the European Union had been converging, uh, since joining the European Union, Portugal had been converging to the European core in terms of economic growth and standards of living. But the crisis had brought back growing imbalances within the Eurozone. In the last few years, the Portuguese citizens faced the idea that austerity policies were an European imposition. This was not healthy, either for Portugal or for Europe. The new government is now following a different approach even if always fulfilling our responsibilities and our European commitments. We respect them and upload them in dialogue with the European institutions. We belong to Europe. Portugal belongs to Europe. Ireland belongs to Europe. We both know that it's only with Europe that we will achieve the growth and employment policies we plan to implement in our countries and in Europe. National economies and markets are more and more interconnected and interdependent. A constructive participation in the European process is only possible if you all realize the importance of our European Union membership, both for each of us and for Europe as a whole. Portugal will always be on the front line, defending a Europe of results and progress for all Europeans. Sharing these ideas with you is, for me, a privilege. For many years, I dealt with communicating the EU message in Portugal as in Brussels, like Barbara. I know that the Institute of International and European Affairs has been and continues to be one of the best places in Europe to debate ideas, doubts and projects which will definitively contribute to European integration process. Thank you very much. Thank you very much indeed.